Hello everyone. So I came across this really huge caterpillar at the park. And I was not coming to try to find caterpillars or anything. I was just going to come to the park just to record Eastern Tiger Swallowtails. Um, because I was going to make a video about the beautiful Swallowtail butterflies. So, um, I was just walking along trying to see something and I found this big caterpillar and this right here is a polyphemus moth caterpillar. So remember those big polyphemus moths and I had three cocoons, polyphemus moth one, polyphemus moth two, and the miniature polyphemus moth three. So I don't know if you watch those videos, but you have, you know what the polyphemus moth looks like. So this is a polyphemus moth caterpillar, and so it's going to be really interesting trying to raise this caterpillar because um, last time I had the cocoons, but now I get to actually watch from the caterpillars. So this is really cool. And since it was crawling around the ground, I don't know if it's ready to make a cocoon. It's a very, very big caterpillar. There are some caterpillars even bigger than this caterpillar. So caterpillars can get really, really big. So they eat oak trees because it was beneath the oak tree. So I'm going to get an oak tree watch for this big, huge caterpillar. It's so big. Look how big that thing is. And it's going to turn into a big, beautiful moth. So as you can see, the caterpillar is trying to crawl outside of the enclosure, but it's going, it's trying to go up the slippery side instead of going up the fabric side where it can crawl out more easily. So I'll give you another update on this caterpillar when we get back home. Okay everyone, so we got home and this is the big polyphemus moth caterpillar and it's a very large green caterpillar. So. It had started to make its cocoon in the corner of the net when we got home, so it is ready to pupate, and that's why it was not on its host print when I first found it. So it had started to make a cocoon, but for some reason it stopped and crawled to the top of the net because it was in the corner, and it had started to make its cocoon, but it crawled, crawled to the top of the net, and this thing crawling on my hands feels so weird. So I'm going to um, give it a better place to make a cocoon. I'm going to put it into the large enclosure and see if it makes a cocoon there. Okay everyone, so it's been a couple hours since I found this caterpillar and it is now starting to redo its cocoon. You can see some silk right there at the side of the net and right now it's working on You can see how it turns from side to side. Um, it's making silk from its mouth. So I'm going to keep watching this caterpillar as it builds up its cocoon. It's going to be very interesting to watch. Hello everyone, it's August 21st, and I'm going to open up the cocoon. So before I do that, I'm going to explain to you why I'm going to open it up. 
So both moths and butterflies have chrysalises, but the main difference is that many moth caterpillars will spin themselves a silky cocoon and then become a chrysalis inside their cocoon and the term for that is pupate. And butterfly caterpillars often just make a silk button hanging on it in the J shape and pupate on that with no silk cocoon around them. So not all moth caterpillars make a cocoon. Some, like the oakworm moth, actually bury themselves underground to pupate. And there are some butterflies that don't have to be hanging in a J-shape to become a pupa as well. So what I'm going to do is open up the cocoon to get the pupa out. Because if you open up a moth cocoon, you're going to find a pupa inside of it. And the cool thing with many giant silk moths is that you can actually tell if it's a boy or a girl before it hatches. So remember in some of my videos from a couple months ago when I had some cocoons I said that the males have big antennas and the females antennas are smaller than the males. So that's also true when they're in the pupa stage and you can actually tell even when it's a pupa. So this is an image that I found online, and it's not my own picture, but I'm just using it to show you what I'm talking about. So you can see in the female that the antenna are so small that they do not meet in the middle. And you can see in the male that the antenna are so big that they actually meet in the middle. So that's the difference, because the male is going to have bigger antennas than the female. So that means that this pupa right here is going to become a girl polyphemus moth, and you can also see that it has a little notch on it. This pupa up here is going to hatch into a boy polyphemus moth because its antennae are so big and it doesn't have any notch on it. So if I open up the pupa and see these big huge antennas, then I know that I'm going to have a boy polyphemus moth. If I open it up and see these small antennas, then I know that the polyphemus moth hatching out is going to be a girl one. And not just knowing if the moth will be a boy or a girl, but knowing when it will hatch is also another treat you get when you open up the cocoon. So, just like butterfly chrysalises, the chrysalis of a moth becomes transparent before hatching because the the surface of the chrysalis gets so thin that you can see the wings when it has completely developed inside and so that means that i might actually get to get a recording of the moth coming out which is what would make it interesting more interesting than it was last time because last time i didn't know when they were going to come out i just woke up one morning and the first one hat came out we went to a restaurant came back the second one hat came out and then i opened the door up after sunset the third one which was a miniature came out but i didn't actually get to see them coming out or record them coming out so if I open up the cocoon I will be able to see when it gets transparent and I might actually be able to see or record the moth coming out so how cool that will be to see a polyphemus moth emerge from its cocoon so knowing that those treats are offered when you open up the cocoon let's get to opening it up so it's been about two days since I've started to open up this hole in the pupa and I mean not in the pupa but in the cocoon you want to open up the cocoon not open up the pupa so what I was trying to say is that it's been two days since I um, started to open this hole in the pupa and yesterday was August 20 and that's the day that it pupated because I could see through that hole at first all I saw was caterpillar I saw a caterpillar I could tell it was bleeding and see I could see his legs and stuff so I could tell it had not pupated yet but now I can tell that it's brown in there which is a sign that it had pupated so yesterday I saw like a light yellow color which meant it was a fresh pupil which is still too soft to handle because it could easily be damaged if you handle it but now it's nice and brown and ready to be handled and I can handle it without damage. So let's keep opening this up and I'm excited to find out if it's going to be a male or a female.
The wound is blowing. I would be opening this up inside of the house. But, unfortunately, I don't have a lamp anymore. Something went wrong with it, so we had to get rid of it. And, the big lamp we had to get rid of. So now, like I said, I'm using mini desk lamps. And I think I already mentioned this before. Um, I'm using mini desk lamps. And, uh, I have to use the batteries because the batteries, I have to keep changing the batteries constantly and it batteries out really fast. So I had just changed the batteries and at first the light was really bright and working like new and just overnight it got really dim and now it's so dim that if I use that you couldn't even tell that there was a light. So I thought, oh if it's outside the sun that will be bright enough for the tablet to actually pick up the light. So it's plenty of cloudy out here right now, the sun is being marked by the cloud. But just the light of the sky, just the light of the day is enough. So that's what I'm doing outside. Nope. I have to be kind of careful, I don't want to hurt the people. And these are not the kind that you can just open up with your hands. I'm going to try to lift up some more of it. See the people in there? That's a nice big hole right down I'm opening up. I can see like, it looks like I'm opening up the other way because I can see like the caterpillar oil skin right here. So that's the bottom of it and the other way is the top. So like this I'm not going to find out some other female just yet. So just keep opening. Keep cutting. Oh, this is really interesting. Hmm. I thought I may have saw some tears. So I've been, the whole time, I've been hoping this is a female, but I've kind of had a feeling that it might be a male instead. So let's open it up and see if it's a male or a female. I think I may have saw some antennas, some large antennas, so maybe it's actually a male. Just like my feelings, my feelings could tell me. But let's see. Let's see that. There we go. Oh wow. Well, um, it was turned away where I could see it, but then it just moved on and turned over. Oh, oh yeah, buddy. I am right. I saw the antennas are big, and it's a male. Yep, that's a male. A boy one. Let's keep opening it up. Yep, that is most certainly a boy in there. So, my feelings are right. Because, like I said, when I was hoping that there was going to be a female one in there, but then I kept having a feeling that it was actually a male for some reason. And I don't know why I had that feeling, but my feeling for telling me the truth. Oh. So, I'm going to have another boy come out of this cocoon. A male, because the boys have to be in two minutes. I saw him wiggling in there. He's wiggling around. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's really cool right there. So you can see the pupa, the chrysalis in there of the polyphenous mouth. And it's a mouth. Open up big enough that I can get him out of there.
Yep, right here is a great view of the antennas. Can you see it? It just turns around again. The big antennas so big that they touch each other in the middle, just like that picture showed earlier in the video. So that's a male. And he just pupated it yesterday. So last time I had some pupas. They took three months. I mean, they took three months to hatch when I had the cocoons last time. So I did post the videos on the moths when they hatched and their release and everything. So they took three months. That was a long time to hatch out. And that's because I found them in the winter. So they were in the middle over winter when I found them. I mean, I actually found them in the end of autumn. So they were in the middle of overwintering and by the time I got them tattooed they were still overwintering. So there's another good view right there of his antenna. And he's wiggling because that's what they do to scare off predators when they feel threatened. So I still have to open a little bit more for me to be able to get him out of the cocoon. There we go. Let's see if I can get him out of there. So I can show him to you. It's beautiful now. Healthy male people. See, I might need to open up just a little bit more. The cocoon is making a lot of dust that's getting on him. Okay, there we go. Might have to lift him out instead of trying to shake him out. I just don't want to hurt him. I want to open it up enough that I could just, like, shake him out. Like, do like this. Oh, there we go. See, he's coming out. Whoa, that's the, co the pupa outside the cocoon. So this is a nice male right here. Well, this is really great. Listen. And for some reason, one of the antennas look kind of smaller than the other antenna. So I don't really know if it's actually smaller. It looks smaller, one end, and it is kind of strength up compared to the other one. I mean, not extremely strength up. If you look closely. Oh, I wouldn't have brought in that for a bit. Can't look that up because I'll be I mean, I hate littering. I mean, like, I hate seeing litter all over the ground, so I don't want that to go into somebody else's yard. But like I said, this is a male, and like I said, you can see right there, the antenna, one antenna is smaller than the other. See how one it is a little bit upward compared to the other, so I don't know why that's so. That might be a deformity, but he'll still be okay. He could still hatch out. He might just have one antenna slightly smaller than the other, but that's not really anything that would really affect him that much. It's not really a retardation, that's just a slightly deformed antenna. And he's still kind of soft right now, so I have to gently handle him. I can't be all harsh with him. I never try to be harsh when handling pupas but that is one big pupa i'm so happy you paid it successfully so my feelings were right when i felt that it was going to be a male even though i hoped for a female so now i will continue to wait in the next weeks for the hatch so what i was saying earlier is that um, last time i found them in the autumn at the end of autumn last year they were already in the middle of overwintering and you saw, I don't know if you may have watched those videos I posted on the moths when they hatched. So, this one should actually take um, a faster time to hatch. It should take two weeks to hatch, which that's how long most butterflies also take to emerge from the pupa. So, hopefully, he'll emerge pretty soon. And hopefully, I'll actually get to record him emerging this time because I actually opened up the cocoon. And just like butterfly chrysalises get transparent before they hatch, a moth pupa also does that. 
So when they're inside the cocoon, I couldn't tell if they were getting transparent or not, or when they were getting transparent or not. And so I didn't really know when to expect hatching. And so I didn't get any videos of the hatching. I just had to had to post the update video saying that the moth hatched, but I never got a reveal of the hatching. So hopefully this time will be a ton more interesting than last time because I actually got to watch the caterpillar make a cocoon and I also maybe will get to actually watch this one emerge. So what a treat that will be. So let's hope that in the next two weeks this one will be emerging as a beautiful moth and let's hope that it's nice and healthy and that I get to actually see it emerge. So bye everyone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. See you next time.